Hello everyone and welcome to another Blender Made Easy tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create this 3D printing animation in Blender. How this is going to work is we're going to use a model that's already in Blender, we're going to export it as an STL, and then use a 3D printing slicer program to actually slice how it would in real life, then we're going to export that slice file back over into Blender. Now you can do this with any model that you like. If you wanted to use the same one I'm using, you can download this Blender logo linked in the description. Next, we're gonna go over to File, down to Export, and then export this model as an STL. Save it to wherever you like, and then click on Export. Once you've done that, you're gonna want to go into the description and click the link to go over to the perusa3d.com and download this slicer. You can select which operating system that you want down here, and then select Download and Install. Once you have it downloaded and opened up, here is what it's going to look like. And what you're going to want to do is click and drag that STL into the program and then just left click. You can see here that the object is too small, we can just recalculate it and it'll appear in our scene. Then if you want to scale this up, you can press the S key for the shortcut or select the tool on the left, click and drag on the corners to scale it upwards. So here is our current object. If we slice this now, we can see what it's going to look like. Over on the right side, we can click and drag to see the different layer lines. And this is looking pretty good so far, but I'm gonna show you how to customize this, get supports, and change different colors. Now, first off, before we do anything else, I wanna make sure that my settings are consistent with your settings as well. To do this, we're gonna be adding in a new printer. Jump over to the Printers tab, select this drop-down menu, and then click on Add or Remove Printers. It's gonna download some presets automatically, and then once that's done, it'll open up. I don't need an update. It's gonna open up into this window. You're gonna to want to go over to the Perusa Research and then select the point for nozzle right here. Now again, this really doesn't matter which one that you select, but just to make sure that my settings are consistent with your settings, go ahead and select that one there and then click on Finish. Next, what I want to do is over on the right side, I'm gonna switch it from beginner mode over to expert mode. This will give us a lot more options for customizing how we want to slice our file. What we're gonna do next is over to the extruders option here, we're gonna bring up the extruders to a value of three. The reason we're doing this is because we're gonna use different extruders for different colors. And I'll show you how to do that later in this video. Once we've done that, we can go over to the printer settings, go over to the info option. You can see here, if we slice our file again, this is what the infill is, this grid line right here. And the amount of grids is controlled by the inflow density here. If we wanted to go higher, like let's say 40, this is gonna be way too much, but I'll show you what it does. Now, if we slice it again, we can see here that it's way more dense in that grid pattern. Personally, I think it is too much, so I'm actually gonna go down to 15%. And you can also change the fill pattern if you wanted to use right now it's on stars you could switch it to rectangle or 3d honeycomb that might look pretty cool if we slice it again you'll be able to see what that looks like so feel free to customize the pattern that you want for the infill for this setup i think i'm going to stick with the grid and with a value of 15 for the infill density next if we go back over here you're going to see that there's a thing that goes around and this is called the skirt if you wanted to remove that, you can go over to the print settings underneath skirt and brim. You can turn this down to zero and now you'll see that it is gone. I think I actually like it there, so I'm going to leave it on. And I might actually go up to three loops. Next, we're gonna jump over to the support material and we're going to generate support here. Underneath the style, we can change which style that we want. Grid, for example, if we slice this now, you'll see what grid looks like. That is what it looks like. If you wanted to, you can change it from grid over to organic, which I think that's what I'm gonna do for this tutorial. Now, if we slice it again, you'll see what this looks like. Now we have these kind of tree branches that are extruding upwards. Feel free to change this to your preference, but I'm gonna stick with organic. Next, we're gonna jump over to the multiple extruders option. We're gonna set the support material raft skirt extruder up to a value of three. So instead of using the first extruder, it's gonna be using the third one. And that's basically all we really need to do for the settings. Now for the colors, we're gonna jump over to the printers option once again. Underneath the extruder one, let's go with an orange color for the Blender logo. 
Then for the second color in the Blender logo, we can leave it on blue. And then the third one, again, is gonna be using the support color. So choose whatever color that you want here. I think for my supports, I kind of want a lime green color. Go ahead and click OK. Now we will be able to change these colors in Blender later. This is just to make it easier for us to customize it once we actually export it. So change all the colors there. Then we're gonna go back over to the over to the plate option. Select the button over here to see the preview. And now to customize the colors, what we need to do is come over to this option here, the multi-material painting. Go ahead and select it. Here we can select which extruder that we want. And how it works is left click will paint extruder one and then right click will paint extruder two. Over here, you can switch it over to how you want to fill it in. I think smart fill is pretty good. Now to get that blue in the Blender logo, just switch it to Smart Fill and then right click on that face and that face. That looks pretty good. We can also go into the back. We'll click on here, right click and right click and right click. And then underneath, I'm also gonna right click right there. So now the stand and then the inside of the logo is blue. With that done, we can go ahead and slice it. Now one thing that needs to be mentioned is the layer height. If we zoom in here, Every single one of these layers is adding more geometry to the model once we export it into Blender. Doing this method, I've had models with over 15 million vertices back in Blender, which can really slow down the whole uh, process. If you wanted to help prevent that, what you can do is just press S to scale and scale the entire model down a little bit, and that's going to make it so that those layer lines are a little bit bigger and there's not as many of them. So something like this, now we can see it's looking a lot better. Now the next step to import this back over into Blender is we need to go over to File, down to Export, and then select Export Tool Paths as OBJ. Now this setting is only in the Perusa Slicer. Orca or Cura I don't think has this option here to export the tool paths, so that is why we're using Perusa uh, for this tutorial. So go ahead, select Export Tool Paths as OBJ, save it to wherever you want. I'm just going to save it right there. Now back in Blender, we're going to import that into our scene. We're going to go up to File, down to Import, and then select Wave Front OBJ. Navigate to where the model is, select the .obj, and then select Import Wave, wave Front. And once it's done exporting, we can see it there in our scene. It is very large, so we're going to press S, type .01, and Enter. And there we go, now we have a more reasonable sized model. Let's rotate this 90 degrees so it's sitting flat on the grid floor. And then I'll just place it right about here. And now for the materials. If we jump over to the material tab, we're gonna see the three here, and these are the three extruders that we created in Peruse the Slicer. This first one is gonna be the orange color, and if you wanna use the exact orange color of the logo, type in the hex code, we're gonna go with E87D0D and that's gonna be the exact orange that we need. As for the blue color, go ahead and select it. For the hex code, we're gonna type 265787. There we go. And then for the support material, you can use whatever color that you like. I think I might stick with this uh, lime color, but I might make it a little less saturated. Now there are two ways to create that building effect. One way is to go over to the modifier tab, select add modifier, generate, and then use the build modifier. Now, if we play our animation, you're gonna see it slowly starts to build our object. And if we skip through a couple of frames, we can see it is looking pretty good. Over on the right side, you can set when you want to start and how long the build animation is gonna be. We can go with 250. Now, this will look pretty good, but I've noticed in my testing that it looks a little bit choppy. The animation isn't as smooth as I would like it to be. Now the other method I'm gonna show you is a little bit more resource heavy. So this method is easy. All you have to do is just add the modifier and hit render. But if you want a smoother transition with the building, I'll show you that real quick. First, we're gonna add in a new object. We're gonna go with a cube object, go into front view, and then just scale this down until it matches the size that we need, something like that. Then on frame one, we're gonna hit K and add in a location keyframe jump all the way to the end, frame 250, G and Z, and drag it up till it's above the object. Then press K again, and then add in another location keyframe. We can see here, this is the effect. Now it does start out a little bit slow, speeds up in the middle, and slows down at the end, 
So to fix that, we're just gonna box select everything, press T while hovering in the timeline, and select linear. Now it's gonna move at a constant rate through the entire animation. Next, we're going to add in a Boolean modifier to this object. Go ahead and select it, go over to Add Modifier, Generate, and then add in a Boolean modifier. Now again, this is a little bit more intensive of a process. It will take a little bit longer to render, but in my opinion, I think it looks a little bit better. We're gonna switch the solver from exact over to fast. That will also help with speeding things up. I'm gonna turn this off in the viewport just so it doesn't slow down the simulation. And then for the object, we're gonna select the cube. The other thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is select our cube, go into edit mode, right click and subdivide. We wanna do this one more time and this will help prevent any glitches in the Boolean modifier. I notice without doing this, you get some weird issues where the entire cube is visible for one frame. One more thing you're gonna to wanna to do is select the cube and hide it from the viewport and hide it from the render, just so it doesn't show up when you do the final animation. As for the rest of the scene, what I like to do is just add in a plane object. We can scale this plane up pretty big, and then we can jump over to the shading workspace. Here I'll show you a quick tip on how to create a nice grid floor. We're gonna create a new uh, material with that plane selected. Then over here, we're gonna press Shift A, add in a texture, and then use a brick texture. To see what this looks like, we'll take the color, plug it into the base color, over here, we're going to set the offset down to zero. And then for the color two, we're going to select that color, eyedropper tool and select the color one so that they're the same. As for the scale, let's go all the way up to around 50. I don't really like how it's a rectangle. So what we can do here is underneath the height, let's go with a value of 0.5. I think the scale is still a little bit too big. So let's scale it up, go around a value of 250 or so. That looks pretty good. And then for the mortar size, let's divide this in half so it looks pretty thin. The other thing I like to do is add in another brick texture. Let's press Shift D, place this right here. And this is going to be a thicker grid floor. To get this to actually line up with the other brick texture, we're gonna do a little trick here. We're gonna add in a value node. Then we're gonna press Shift A, add in a converter math node. We're gonna take the value, plug it into the top input, switch the mode over to divide, then take the value, and this is gonna be plugged into the scale. We're gonna take the value from the value node and then plug this as the scale for the bottom brick texture. And then for this value, let's go back up to 250. This divide node allows you to control how many bricks apart the thicker line will be. So for example, if we go with a value of three and then we bring the mortar size up a little bit, We'll have to add this into the other brick texture. Let's select the divide node, shift it, D it, and place it over here. Take the color, we'll plug it into the bottom input, and then all we have to do is switch this over to divide. There we go. So you can see here with a value of three, every three bricks, there's gonna be a thicker line. We can go even higher, we can go with a value of five. So every five bricks, there's gonna be a thicker line. I think the mortar size is a bit too much though, since we've added, a since the scale is bigger. So let's bring this down to 0 0.005. And I think that will look pretty good. Over in the principal shader, I'm gonna set the roughness down to 0.1 so we get some nice reflections. For the rest of the lighting, we can add in an HDR to light up our object. We can switch it over to the world settings. If you have the node wrangler add-on enabled, you can select the background texture, press control T, and that's gonna add in a mapping node and environment texture node. Let's click open, and if you wanna use the same HDR I'm gonna use, I'll put the link in the description. Click on open image, and now if we go into the rendered view, we should be able to see what this is gonna look like. From here, we can go over to the EV render settings, enable ray tracing. Underneath the color management, we can set the look to high contrast. And there we go, that is looking pretty good. At this point, we can go ahead and set up the camera. If you wanted to animate the camera moving around like you saw at the beginning of the video, you can do that here. And once you're happy with everything, go ahead and render out an animation. But that's going to do it for this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching. If you created something cool, please send it to me on Instagram at BlenderMadeEasy. If you have other ideas for tutorials you would like to see in the future, let me know in the comments down below. But that's going to do it. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.